so we've got open core patch here okay this has changed a little bit since the last time i used it it was a it was a much thinner window looked a bit older okay so we want to create a mac os installer button download the mac os installer because we don't actually have one yet if we already had that on our machine we could uh, we could do that Right, so first of all, what we want to do is create a macOS installer because we don't have the installer on our laptop already or on our Mac Pro, sorry. If we did, we would be able to use an existing macOS installation. So if you've already got it, you can click this button, but I don't. So let's download the macOS installer. So initially we get the Apple boot screen. So I've got my original macOS, I've got my Windows separate drive, the macOS 10.11 recovery core legacy patcher. So let's go to that one. This should bring up another boot screen. We can go straight into macOS or we can go into our Monterey installer and that's what we're going to do. We have install macOS Monterey. So now this option will just install macOS Monterey over the top of my macOS 10.11. So this is essentially an upgrade. It's always best to go for a disk utility, wipe the disk, and then choose the installer. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into disk utility. We're gonna find our macOS disk. We're gonna wipe it completely. Uh, we'll call it macOS again, which makes it a bit easier to spot when I'm doing things. Uh, I kind of wish I'd done that with the Windows disk actually, because that is kind of annoying, as I don't know what it is. So I got my macOS disk with 255 gig of space out of the disk utility. Let's go into the installer. So now we want this one, okay? So it won't see there's another OS on there and therefore it won't try to upgrade it. It will just give us the option for a fresh install. So we're gonna agree and agree again. We want to install it on macOS, about 40 minutes remaining. Now that's really quite a long time actually, so hopefully it doesn't take 40 minutes. Oh, okay, there you go, 23 minutes. A few moments later. So that wasn't very easily labeled actually, but one of them said install macOS Monterey and everyone said macOS installer. We've come with the macOS installer because that will continue the installation. All oh, right, now we have a new countdown, about 29 minutes remaining. A few moments later. Okay, so another reboot. This is the install it from, you know, nothing from recovery. And this is the installer that is currently running. So let's just go back in that and see how far we got. We're finally into the installation or the setup part of the installation, I should say. Uh, open core is detected. So this is quite an important thing. I'll just see if I can make my keyboard work a second. We have a European keyboard. This is really important because it's saying open core legacy patch was detected that you are booting open core from a USB or external drive. If you would like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install an open core to the internal hard drive. Would you like to open the patcher and install? But this is really important because I don't know if it was meant to be like this or people just didn't realize, but in the early days of open core legacy patcher, the way that people were doing it was with a USB stick. They were then stuck with that USB stick. They couldn't remove the USB stick from the computer without losing access to their patched OS. And there was always a way to manually correct that, but it's now kind of automatic in that OCLP recognizes this and asks us if we want to correct this right now. Now, it was like this, certainly in my last version, further back, people were perhaps leaving their USB sticks in there or, or never actually finishing setting up the disk properly. So we're gonna say okay, we'll open OCLP, up here. Build and install, and now we wanna to install to disk. Now we want to install it onto our actual installation media. So yes, we want it, we want it to go into the EFI for our disk one. You will always need your admin password to complete this kind of activity. You will notice it says that you need to reboot and hold the option key and select the EFI option again. I am holding down the option key. Okay, so you will see we now have our Windows disk, we have our patched boot, which we've just created, the USB stick for installing, and then we've got a USB stick with the patched EFI boot as well. So what we want is this one. We want Mac OS. Again, we're seeing both options, but we're gonna go with Mac OS. My desktop looks a bit funky, actually. Oh, there you go, okay, it's working now. Let's bring up OCLP again. Got post install root patch. Okay, so this is quite important. This is any additional hardware drivers that we need. So we're just gonna check it. All available patches are already installed. Okay, so we don't need to do that. In terms of the menu, um, let's go to settings. What we're interested in here is show the open core boot picker. We don't really need that anymore. We just want it to boot up. 
content caption five seconds for the big picker timeout but we're not going to show that anymore okay so this didn't used to be ticked so I, I thought actually before you used to get this thing where when you open the menu you got this weird sort of flickering and that doesn't seem to happen anymore i think we're pretty good so we've just removed our boot picker we're going to do one more thing this time we're going to intercept the boot so i am holding down the option key okay, and you'll see i now have two options here i've got my windows disk and my efi boot now this is useful it should always go to the last one anyway i don't really see a need for windows in the short to midterm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control. If you hold control, you'll see this arrow at the bottom. Uh, it changes from, this is like boot now, but if we hold control, what this means is that every time it reboots, always go to this one until I come back in here and change that preference. Okay, so we're going to do that. And there you go, directly in. No boot screens that we need to make options, make decisions, and we are ready to go. We've got a nice new installation. Thanks for following along. If you do have any questions there are a couple of bits where it goes a bit funny so if you do have any questions drop them down below and i will be happy to help you see you on the next one